Uh, yes, I'm Antti Majava. My background is in arts uh, more than in, in uh, research or in academic, uh, academic field. Uh, I graduated from the Academy of Fine Arts from Helsinki 2008 and uh, I have been practicing art since that and also been involved in many collaborative projects and, uh, and uh, yeah, like during my studies I got really interested in ecological issues and challenges and climate change and things like that and I was quite surprised uh, um, how few or how zero uh, like kind of contents, educational contents we had in the Academy of Fine Arts uh, related to outer world or environment or something outside human uh, mind, not even the body was there, like uh, the mind only and the concept and theories and this over theory, this sizing of art was somehow really problematic for me. But now I find myself as a I wouldn't say even junior researcher. I'm I'm uh, having my second year in the in this uh, multidisciplinary environmental uh, sciences or this Denvi uh, unit doctoral school of environmental sciences or how it is. Uh, and then I'm also making my my uh, in a way like I'm I'm working full time in BIOS, which is a research unit of seven uh, or six real researchers and me <laughs> as a half something in between person. Um, but our challenge is to investigate the, the international or like collect the best possible scientific understanding of the uh, ecological crisis, different sides of that and uh, think how they will affect the Finnish society and how we should communicate about those challenges and problems and threats in mass media and uh, also in decision making in political and eco economical system. So this is what I'm doing as day work or, uh, and then practicing my art and, uh, and also, uh, yeah, I, can, I have a right to use my time also to my research. So. Uh, yeah, there's many, many, many like uh, streams coming from different angles or, or directions and I'm trying to compose something uh, from those artistic and scientific sources which I'm dealing with. So this is the title now. I try to talk something which is, which is making sense and we will all understand better what I'm meaning with these words there. Um, yeah, my title or my kind of like a, a starting point for my, my research is uh, this uh, idea of socio-ecological socio transitions. I would add, uh, or well, art is named there, but uh, I'm quite often talking about socio, socio or social, ecological, cultural transitions. I think it's quite needed to involve culture also into the discussions when we are mostly handling the ecological topics uh, as a kind of technical matter or, uh, or uh, lately it's more and more present in social sciences but uh, the field of cultural uh, studies and uh, humanism or how to say, hu uh, well, art faculties and so on, it's not that much present even though it's, it's inevitable that it should be. And talking about these issues is quite often something that it's so clear that it's hard to imagine that someone doesn't understand uh, why we are talking about this. This happened to me in, in the Academy of Fine Arts 2008. When I graduated, I, I organized a course or lecture series about climate change and I, I invited the best professionals from Finland to tell to, to students uh, what 
why we should be concerned about this issue. And then after this uh, quite successful eight lecture series, I, I, I was asked by a professor of Academy of Fine Arts that why you think this should be considered in the Academy of Fine Arts. It, and this was after the, the series. So like after uh, all the professionals from different fields, fields were presenting uh, the urgency and the, the, the kind of like uh, the super threat to everything, like how our lives are, or, or in the very life, life support systems, we had <laughs> all the words were used like that, like to make people understand, even the artists, that we can't avoid uh, taking part to this conversation about the ecological crisis and the solutions to those. Even after all that, the, the, the professor didn't understand why artists should deal with these issues. So it's quite, quite um, deep inside, especially art and art academies, that we are kind of conceptual beings or we are just minds without a uh, physical bodily uh, connection to the, to the life support systems or however we call them. And this is making, this is the kind of background why I'm, why I'm still uh, working with very simple, uh, very simple basics of, of uh, our, our relations to, to the world. Um, okay, this is just the basic kind of structure which I'm using in my work and you all I guess you are quite familiar with social ecological system studies and and frameworks and and uh, I'm just like I can I'm I'm talking about human system or whatever I can I can also handle this balloon as an as an art and then here is ecosystem and then the art is uh, there's kind of interventions coming from human system. In my case, it's actually suprematism, the art, uh, uh, avant-garde art uh, school or, or way of thinking uh, 100 years ago in, in St. Petersburg. Uh, so I'm thinking how this, uh, this uh, school, school of avant-garde action uh, what, what kind of like a scientific knowledge or understanding of the world it had or which kind of like a scientific writings and thoughts it was referring to and uh, and also what kind of notions of environment the artists made and there's quite nice and clear evidence and written text which I'm able to use in my work. Uh, for example, Suprematist Manifesto, which is not very long text, but it's, it's quite clearly communicating the, the notions the artist made at that time in that particular school. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, my other, when, when it's a circle, then of course I'm thinking also how the art and, uh, and thinking in arts and practices there are uh, changing the ecosystem or, or affecting to uh, ecological framework. And then uh, some kind of like a starting point from, uh, for me was the kind of notion that uh, planet Earth looks uh, amazingly similar uh, when you look them, uh, look the planet from the from the satellite images, than the suprematist artworks 100 years ago, and this this is like what I'm digging out of this whole bubble, social ecological system framework. That is it somehow possible that there is a kind of like artistic uh, and aesthetic tendency in our. Uh, huge anthropogenic uh, uh, kind of changing 
altering the planet, surface of the planet and all the systems of the planet, is there a kind of like a aesthetic reasons or nominators for this action? Uh, and uh, if we are talking about technology, is the technology uh, kind of rational, rational uh, should, we, should we understand it as something rational or how we understand rationality? It's, it's, it's also dealing with cultural understanding of ourselves and humanity and social systems and so on. I'm, I'm getting into, into the mess, so let's, let's uh, continue with super clear uh, things. So, here we have the most, uh, most famous uh, suprematist artwork. Uh, Kasimir Malevich, uh, uh, black square on white surface. Uh, I think this is, he made maybe seven versions of that. This is not the earliest one, but this is from the maybe uh, 1920 something. Uh, the first one was made uh, 1915. Uh, and yes, I'm, I'm having it like this because I'm, what I'm talking here is not only the artwork but the framework surrounding it. The human uh, spectator or the museum space or even the whole planet surrounding the work. And, uh, and uh, I've wrote some thoughts unfortunately in Finnish, but I will translate them as uh, fast as I can into, into English. Um, actually, there is an... Yeah, this is needed. This is just like the first, first um, uh, thought is for, uh, picked from Helsingin Sanomat, the biggest newspaper in Finland, and the art critic uh, Anu Uimonen is uh, ec ec uh, in a way like uh, explaining what, what, what this black square is representing or, or uh, so on. So uh, this is, yeah, the thing there is that uh, she is saying that it's, it's uh, maybe better example than any, anything else in, in, in modernism uh, about uh, the attempt to something sublime and spiritual, something which is going, uh, which is going uh, like over or <laughs> ah, beyond the material uh, reality, something spiritual going beyond the material reality. And uh, this is super fruitful for me to, to, to think that this is the most common kind of translation of the work, I would say, uh, even internationally, not only among Finnish critics. But then we have quite, uh, quite a common translation. This is just picked from uh, some website uh, and some art professionals there are describing the, the black square and its meaning and something behind it, it, like, like here. And they are actually linking it much more to material world and material, it, 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 they are seeing it as a kind of material phenomena. So uh, my question is there in, in between these that like uh, it's really interesting that we are we are in a way like uh, quite often when when looking abstract art, we are referring to to something um, which is outside of uh, ourselves, our bodies, and outside of nature. The abstraction is on outside of nature, and even if we say that it's it's just an attempt to get uh, to the kind of like. Uh, to reach something outside of nature, it's, it's still a kind of real uh, attempt or it's, it's a kind of like, a, it's really difficult to actually say it really 
like easy way because it's so strange what we think what is there outside of bodily and natural context so there is quite much information and quite much like a, a kind of a, it's super packed uh, idea that uh, the the spiritual and sublime are something which doesn't have uh, material means or it's it's where we see the 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 holy or spirit or whatever is is unmaterial of course this is really common way of thinking in in many religions and so on um but yeah of course there's the ironic side of it is that this very painting is very material you can't see it in in this picture but it's 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 really the time hasn't been very uh like it has handled it very like a uh, rough way it's full of all kinds of markings from from different different parts of its history and how it has been storaged and uh the the surface of the paint there is is really like uh uh suffered and uh and the very object is is very like material uh but the, the how why we are talking about the spiritual side or or um or something else than material uh, materiality of the work is maybe because we uh or there is a kind of um intention to get uh or maybe i will change the We are uh, locking the, the suprematism in the idea of getting outside, or we are thinking that body and natural environment is something we want to get rid of. And uh, as when I think what Kasimir Malevich was really like uh, uh, churching for was, uh, was a uh, possibility to, to free the body and uh, from the uh, material planetary ties and uh, get into the abstract uh, kind of traveling uh, through the cosmos and um, there is uh, of course like the the real revolution uh, the socia societal revolution in Russia uh, took place at the same time there was like lots of happening in the society the old forms of society were collapsing and uh, and uh, most uh, interestingly I would say from from our uh, time uh, there was a huge uh, uh, transition from uh, bio economy from from uh, solar or sun-powered bioeconomy to to uh, fossil fuel uh, fueled modernism, uh, and actually the energetic side of of uh, the 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 revolution or the uh, or the transition is not very much uh, handled in the in the research yet that actually the the whole um uh why 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 it was like uh what happened in russia at that time uh was really something else also than just political unrest and willingness to get rid of uh char system mm. but what also is community communicated fairly clearly uh, I'm, I'm like the paintings I like them a lot as an artist and I'm, I'm uh, quite much like following this kind of style in my own own stuff but uh, but what I'm really using in my my research are these texts and uh, and uh, and this is uh, from the letter uh, Malevich wrote to his comrade uh, Osip Brink, 
and uh, this this is like uh, this is telling quite clearly that uh, there was really a kind of like a thought that uh, suprematism might mean something so uh, insane that like there's the Malavich is talking about like uh, the the organic uh, nature and the planet Earth as it is in organic form as something boring or something not organized and it should be replaced by suprematist nature, man-made nature uh, following the suprematist uh, ideas. And when it's said so clearly that this is the attempt, this, it's, it's really making me think that there, there, is a, um, there is a kind of like a... Uh, it's, it's just really interesting to think that when it's said so clearly, uh, and now we see after 100 years that the nature has, or we are uh, in the Anthropocene, we are... Uh, seeing the planet is uh, the organic nature is replaced by these forms of uh, economic and uh, uh, technological and uh, industrial production. It's it's uh, it's not. Yeah, as I said, it's not only kind of. Uh, well, I wouldn't use this rational, but it's it's uh, there's other meanings than than uh, just uh, profit making and stuff like that. There is some other text uh, which I wouldn't, I will possibly get back later. But this is how the planet Earth is looking like from the from the satellite image. This is of course like quite strange uh, example. Finland is not looking like this, but this is from Netherlands and. Uh, there is many, many different uh, uh, kind of linkages between the uh, the suprematist works of art and this, but uh, just like maybe you can see something like that in the painting. But um, there is well, this is not exactly suprematist painting, but this is Yupo uh, Popova's uh, const constructionist uh, painting or con painterly construction and uh, what is what is in interesting also for me is that uh, they saw energy they uh, they like uh, which is not seen in the art history uh, or art, art historical studies of suprematism and avant-gardism uh, yet uh, is is the 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 like the super important role of energy in 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 especially in uh, uh, Russian avant-garde and and futurism and uh, well many other schools and uh, the energy there is also or quite often uh, uh, like named as something something really like violent or violent motion which is quite different compared to the the bioeconomy or sun sun based uh, understanding of energy in the agricultural societies and of course we can see the it's it's just the part of the uh, industrialization and and so on that like uh, it's it's uh, there's something war like in the in the energy uh, when these artists are talking about it but yeah now I'm getting uh, getting somewhere where I I, I thought I would <laughs> uh, which I would reach even earlier but this slide is a bit delayed um, but this is like linking the the Russian uh, pre-revolution avant-garde uh, schools and everything happened there into into the kind of uh, 
ecological framework or, or uh, energetic framework. Uh, they were interested in energy, but uh, they thought it as a kind of thermodynamics or uh, in the framework of the thermodynamics, which is somehow like a quite, they thought that the source of energy is in a way irrelevant question. That, that where the energy is coming from, it's, it's, it's not an issue. It's just like the, the, the world or the cosmos is full of energy and what we should uh, follow is the transitions from, from different forms of energy to another and uh, the human society and culture is, is in a way like uh, um, linked to those transitions. But what we have to look really carefully today is the very material source of and of course I'm not like leaving the, the thermodynamics behind or saying that it's, it's not uh, uh, interesting anymore but I'm just saying that there's a huge difference when we are talking about materi materiality from our uh, uh, perspective than what it meant to those guys 100 years ago uh, and this, this uh, very curve is, is telling the story quite easily that the, the, the art which I'm talking about was made here and then uh, the great acceleration uh, the oil uh, came to the scene somewhere here but actually the, the miracle of oil which means that like airplanes and everything were possible because of the high energy content, content of oil, they were somehow like it was creating the kind of like expectations the black square and suprematism was celebrating that now everything will be possible. Like we can, uh, we can make uh, dead people living again or we can, we can like we can conquer the whole cosmos and all those thoughts uh, took place e exactly when the oil was, the, the first drops of oil were used in the, the very efficient machines and so on. So in my work I'm a little bit like uh, trying to uh, overlap the, the, the black square as a painting and, uh, and these kind of like uh, historical curves, core, core curves, curves like uh, um, and I think that this, yeah, I, I know it for sure that this hasn't done very often, at least in, in uh, uh, art studies or art historical framework. <clears throat> uh, but I'm, I'm, of course, the, the framework there is quite strange because, uh, or strange, in that means that, that there has been done lots of like environmentally related work but it hasn't been uh, chosen into the hegemony of the of the of the very research, the field of uh, uh, art historical research. But this is the curve which we are now facing, <clears throat> and this is quite different compared to to this one. This is the great acceleration curve, and this is the curve of our future. Uh, so. Myself as an artist, I'm working here and I'm knowing quite well, even better than the suprematists, uh, what will happen. They were having great expectations, they were actually, the, the black square has been nominated to be something like a, a kind of like a <clears throat> the best, the iconic work in that sense that it's, it's predicting the future the modernism, the, the development of the society and modernism and, and in industrialization for decades, even year 100. But I think that I'm, as an artist, having similar or even better kind of information and knowledge about the, the kind of like uh, possibilities of uh, like a future world. world. And uh, this is what we have to take quite seriously. It seems that we have to cut down the emissions quite soon and, uh, and cut them into the zero. And we have no technological, uh, like any, any 
realistic ways to do that. There is no CCS, carbon capture and storage, uh, like technologies are failing. Uh, there is not much like uh, hope if we don't want to change our uh, thinking, way of thinking and our cultural habits. And, and uh, that's where uh, the artists nowadays, I, I think, should work and quite much they are working in that, that field. But uh, unfortunately, still uh, not as a majority, but but as a small minority. Uh, yeah, what we can have? Yeah, well, this is just saying the same thing, but this is more talking about maybe like living environments or or uh, biodiversity and things like that. This is just say uh, the kind of picture showing the. Uh, probability or possibility of, of uh, state shift. Uh, there's many, many like uh, scientific uh, sources and uh, you all are familiar with these kind of like, uh, like global scientists warming 15,000 scientists signing a paper, uh, like uh, forcing the societies to, to uh, uh, change uh, everything in 10 years or something and uh, it's it's of course it's nothing is really happening like there is not not much like real attempts to ha to change whole societies and make these kind of sustainability transitions in the scale which is needed uh, and there is not even imagination uh, we there is no narratives for these kind of transitions and I think that this uh, suprematism and uh, Russian revolution in, its, uh, in, in general is a kind of narrative what we can actually look uh, uh, closer because even though we, somebody or even not me, I'm not, I'm, I don't like so much what happened there, but the whole society changed totally to something else in five years. And this is in a way giving us kind of uh, example of uh, huge systems changing uh, in very uh, short time and the art uh, how the art was uh, uh, like in a way pushing the society into certain direction is is interesting question for me well well there is lots of like maps like this uh, well but this is the best with, uh, which I'm using quite often, that there is hardly any uh, like natural biomes left. What we have on the planet are most uh, like the colors. They are just telling that we are having having uh, natural ecosystems somewhere here, like in a natural state. I mean, everything is nature, but the, and in the in somewhere in northern Finland and in Siberia, but everything else is more or less like uh, human altered. And uh, I, I'm, I'm quite often asking for myself, what would Malevich, who had this idea that we should change the planet to, to suprematist or the, like uh, the nature, replace the nature by, by suprematist nature, what would he think now? Would he be ha happy or, or something else? And I think that uh, he wouldn't be actually so Proud. I think actually what he did was just that he predicted fairly well what will happen. He had some kind of like uh, uh, skills in, in uh, really like uh, looking deep into the cultural, uh, social, ecological changes in the in the human cultures, and he made made art from from those notions. But then. Uh, how much I have time? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, this became really difficult. I, I, I have lots of text here, which is like a, where I put everything much more precise way, but I can't read it and and uh, tell it at the same time. So I have to survive without my precise notes. Uh, but I hope I can still keep this somehow going on. Uh, Elena Guro 
uh, is an, an alternative example. Like what we usually think when we are talking about, or what we are meaning when we are talking about avant-garde art, is something like suprematism or cubism, or something like futur futurism, uh, which is embracing the the machines and war and uh, and uh, and like the yeah, acceleration. Uh, but there was actually many other kind of schools, artistic schools, uh, uh, existing at the very, the very that time when the, the suprematists were uh, having their uh, meetings. And uh, this organic school is one really uh, like forgotten but important example of, of uh, of uh, nature-related artistic thinking or interconnected uh, thinking. And uh, these are just some examples of Elena Guro's work, which quite much remind me from something which, something quite contemporary. Even though they are not very like uh, for, forceful or, or uh, in a way like skillful, uh, gestures. There's something, something really interesting in these works, and there's not much like uh, works survived from from Elena Guro. But uh, the the organic school was actually uh, um, like uh, wor working in the in the Saint Petersburg before the suprematists and some of the suprematists, even Malevich, was taking part to their meetings and uh, and Malevich uh, uh, adopted for some reasons totally different understanding of the of the same uh, notions of nature and science what the organic school had like this Elena Gura and uh, uh, his uh, or her friends uh, and her husband Matthews in I have forgotten the first name, but Matthew, Matthew uh, they had a villa in, uh, in Finland actually, it was then a part of Finland in Uusikirkko, and uh, they had the first, suprem or first fu futurist uh, meeting uh, there in um, uh, 1913, and uh, they were kind of like together forming the futurist opera of victory over the sun. Uh, which was like about how the sun would be replaced basically by a black square. They hated sun because sun was referring to tar bioeconomy or bio uh, slavery or something like that. And, and, uh, and uh, the whole opera is something like uh, it's written in, in, in fact in Zaum language, which, which is like. Uh, uh, how to say, not logical, so it's, it's not clear what they are saying there, but the, at least the title, Victory Over the Sun, tells quite much that they wanted to replace sun by something else. And I would say that the something else is fossil fuel, which is more capable for proletarian to, to use as their uh, social uh, and political force. Uh, and there is some evidence also behind this, though so it's not only my 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 like uh, thinking. But this organic school, well, yeah, let's get back to the the uh, the, the time there in Saint Petersburg was was quite rough. The the city was uh, developing fast. There was like uh, lots of industry. Uh, popping up, there was like uh, uh, lots of pollution, lots of, like overcrowded streets, uh, and lots of symptoms and illnesses like tuberculosis and things like that. And the organic school thought that this is bad. We should uh, follow much more the nature, or this is the the what is bad here is that we are, we are altering, altering nature, like we are, we are creating new kind of environment which is 
not good for humans even and is super violent for all the other species and so on. So that was the first wave of environmentalism and it, there was some like uh, this um, uh, Kropotkin, uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, someone remembers the first name there. I, I'm really bad with names. But there was like, a, and Leo Tolstoy was also like a little bit like a referring to, or not only a little bit because he, he was like a, suggesting quite much this, the simple lifestyle. We had similar kind of thinkers in Finland and the national romantic movement in Finland was a little bit linked to this kind of like Russian uh, get, getting back to nature movement. And there was uh, uh, Lebensreform in, in Germany and uh, that was the, the big movement at those times. And uh, then, uh, and I would say it was the precautionary principle which was uh, elementary for that kind of thinking. They were shocked because of the changes made by human and they thought that we might destroy the life support systems keeping our lives uh, uh, up or keeping us alive. Uh, they were quite precise actually. They, 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 their writings are communicating the the big kind of worry of what will happen if this continues. But then the other school, the suprematist school, their good friends, they were spending summer together and uh, drinking wine and having fun. But suddenly this other group uh, of mostly, well, they were, they were men and women in both groups, so I wouldn't say that it wasn't, was maleish, but maybe because of, of Malevich figure in suprematism, is so strong, uh, it, it gives an idea that it was kind of male uh, power <laughs> behind uh, suprematism more than behind the organic school. Uh, so they, they somehow thought, and Malovich thought, that as I ex explained or showed um, the texts there, that we shouldn't uh, get back to nature and that this precautionary uh, principle is something to, to just leave behind because we will uh, create a new nature and so we should accelerate the, the, the human development and technology and energy use and everything instead of like uh, uh, being worried or something. And this is still alive. I think this division between the organic school and suprematist friends of them is actually quite elementary uh, in ecological thinking in general, even nowadays, that we have the nature protectors and uh, people concerned in ecological topics, and then we have the engineers concerned also, and uh, economical leaders also concerned in those topics, but they are not worried at all, because they think that this is just a, a positive challenge where we can actually accelerate everything to, 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 uh, to create a better world, even better than the nature uh, or a bit better planet. And um, for my, well, I, I, I don't need to say that it's, it's a really difficult way of think for myself, of a way of thinking. I would put here some like uh, alternatives, some more alternatives Elena Gura was really like well informed uh, by science and, and uh, by, by all the like uh, literature, art phenomena, everything happening at that time. Hilma of Klint had the same privilege. Uh, she's an, or she was a Swedish uh, artist. And uh, I think that these are somehow really interesting Paint, or the, the way of paint, uh, painting and, uh, and, uh, and way of like figuring or, or describing visually uh, the, the world and, and uh, the knowledge and uh, notions of the world uh, in, in these Elena, Elena Guros and Hilma of Klint's paintings are totally like this, these are like from other planet 
than suprematism, even though they are happening at the same time. There is some reasons for, for that, but uh, I'm not able to yet say why, why they are so different. And, and this is referring to uh, Leben's reform or um, Steiner, Rudolf Steiner, who was a good friend of, or they had a kind of like, a, um, uh, they communicated. And uh, so what, what I think would be super like, important at this time is to, to put more attention to those alternative narratives. Uh, like uh, we are still following quite strictly the modernist uh, ideals and technology is the, uh, the number one driver for the society, even though we, we really don't understand what is technology. It's, not, it's, it's, it's social construction, but in Finland we are quite often talking technology as something we should adapt in, or we should adapt ourselves into, into technology. Uh, and I would say it's vice versa that technology is something we create for our purposes, or if we have to change technology, then we think, or like, well, it's just uh, making me angry sometimes, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Good. I will. I will throw this away. I feel quite actually bad with this technological like microphone system, but I have to use it because the other mics are possibly not working. I think I can. I can little by little end my my stuff. It has been a little bit like a, in open format, or or I mean that it's it's not very like. A, uh, I, I, I have to work a lot with my topics and uh, I have to leave something behind because there's too much. But I, I, will, I, will, I will show some pictures of my, of my own work as a discussion or, or as an opening the discussion uh, uh, to, to public or to, to everyone to join. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm really... Um, interested in this kind of like uh, uh, like pairs images this is this is a, a poster of our exhibition a few years ago in in Helsinki and it's from the it was then brand new music house concert hall in Helsinki and it was celebrated as something really the best piece of Finnish architecture ever made and so on but for me and my colleague Nestor Syrjala, it looked like a machine, a machine for arts. And actually, this is not the only image which is a little bit looking like, a, or uh, giving the idea of an amplifier. It looked and still looks for me as a kind of getting into the hi fi amplifier. And then you can't see, but this, this, uh, this metal surface here is exactly similar than the metal surface here. And when we know that this is the most common, or used to be the most common uh, computer model used by architects, uh, we were quite ready to, to, at least in artistic means, think that these kind of like machines used in, in the work were somehow like uh, copying themselves in the aesthetic forms of architecture in the building. But this is not to say that the technology is the, the real driver there, but it's just like, uh, uh, it's just that we are in a way letting our minds to be lazy. <laughs> In, in, in not noticing uh, what kind of, where, where the aesthetics ideals of us uh, or, or of our culture are coming from. Mm. Well, this is just like the, the Russian image uh, of, of a kind of like a, a scientific test of, of uh, uh, like getting, getting well, 
this is maybe not necessary to <laughs> you can see what is there it's just like a non like This, uh, I can't remember it even in Finnish, but when you get tr totally rid of your senses and, uh, and you, you, this is kind of like abstract space in that sense that it doesn't have echo, uh, it's sound chamber or so, uh, echo-less chamber or, or used in that sort of research, but it's, it's just like, uh, I would say it's, it's saying, uh, telling the same story as, as uh, possibly the whole gallery institution or art museum institution that it's it, we we find the noise really like uh, something to get rid of or the world producing the noise and uh, we want to see ourselves or our freed minds floating in the space without bodies and without uh, planetary disturbance uh, by earth uh, well, this is just like continuum. We are still uh, following the Malevichian or suprematist principles or modernist uh, principles, at least in city planning, as it was uh, told. Maybe this is something to finish with, that uh, there is a kind of like what is the, the, the suprematism or why the, the black square is named to be icon that it replaced uh, the, uh, the orthodox uh, icon in the corner. It was first like uh, the first, ha first hanging of, of the painting was in the exhibition where, where it was put exactly where the, the believers put the icons in the corner. And uh, because it was uh, attempt, Malevich wanted to get rid of religion and religious worldviews and things like that. But uh, I think that uh, he was in a way like ready to believe that technology changes everything. And he, that was actually the, the main agenda for many, many like uh, social, uh, socialist revolutionaries and, and the art thinkers. It was based on uh, Russian cosmism, actually. Uh, there was 100 years uh, of uh, or tradition, long tradition uh, in Russia in uh, thinking the space uh, programs and, uh, and, and they, their attempt was, or the reason for human being go, uh, be able to travel in space uh, was to to get closer to to the god that was that was the, like the outspoken uh reason for for the space programs and i'm not sure if it's still something if it, if we have better reasons now for for the space programs actually because it, they are not serving science or the knowledge we are collecting from mars for example is possibly something we are not using much in in science, so why we are going there. Uh, this is Citra's Finnish Innovation found, found, found Foundation or something, Finnish, Finnish Innovation Fund, huge organization, and uh, they make every year this kind of uh, mega trends report, and uh, I just took one uh, kind of uh, image capture from, from there. And this is repeating the same uh, 150 years old narrative that technology changes everything. We are not changing anything, but technology is changing. And, uh, and then it's, it's not easy to see what is there, but it's, it's a, the mystery of death can be solved. And I asked from the, the main developer or the, the person uh, responsible for making this megatrends, all the leaders of the Finnish society were present when this was like a, and they had like huge discussion. There was like many minister, ministers and, and they were like with serious faces, they were like uh, talking about, and this was there behind. I'm actually 
sorry that I didn't take a picture from the real event. But then afterwards I had to ask that why you have this kind of like m the mystery of death can be solved uh, idea there in your official slides. They said that they saw huge investments made into this business or this industry and they they uh, refer to Google or, or Google and other like IT billionaires investing into into this kind of like a, like a, well you know they are putting their bodies into freezers and stuff like that. So for Finnish technological developers, they they thought that when you put money enough to some system, you will even uh, solve the mystery of death. This is really strange ending for my <laughs> really strange presentation, but I will anyways end here. <laughs>